Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, week four here. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Everybody's uh, finding the markets picking up and things are going well and you're starting to implement the things uh, that we learned and put them into implementation and, and action. So that's great. Uh, week one, we started on building a business plan. Week two, we started about mining our database. Week three, we talked about what to say and how to say it. Now in the week four and week five, we're going to focus on lead generation and prospecting. We're going to talk about the importance of consistent uh, daily lead gen prospecting. And I'll start with this. I'm going to share some ideas and some nuggets with you guys on lead gen and prospecting the next two sessions. And, and I want you to just look at it and say, is this something that I could do? Is this something that I would do well? Is this something that I could do effortlessly? Is it something that uh, I would do consistently and something that I'd be interested in? I don't know about you, but I was raised in one of those uh, times where uh, teachers in school would tell me, uh, you know, do more of this and you'll go from sucking at it to only sort of sucking at it. And I'm here to say, if this doesn't resonate with you and you don't feel that it's something you're going to do, then let someone else do it. But with that said, one of the things you're going to fall into a trap is, is, is that a lot of agents, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, are one trick ponies. So they have basically one source of lead gen, one source of prospecting. They only have one, what I call funnel. And if you don't have enough funnels, it won't generate enough conversations. If you don't have enough conversations, it won't generate enough appointments. If you don't have enough appointments, then you won't have enough presentations. If you don't have enough presentations, you won't have enough contracts. If you don't have enough contracts, then you're not gonna have enough sales. If you don't have enough sales, then you're gonna have enough, enough money. If you don't have enough money, then you're not gonna have enough food. If you don't have enough food, you're gonna be sad and mad and you're going to get out of real estate. So at the end of the day, it's not going to work out for you. So it join, it starts off with the people per day. Remember that I talked about in week one is what am I going to do to generate those people per day conversations, those dialogues, those, those discussions where they ask me how the market is, or I ask them, you know, if they have an agent of choice and that, how do I find my points of where I can do and what I can do to have those conversations and focus on people and conversations per day? If I have the conversations, I see the people, then I get the appointments. If I get the appointments, I get the presentations on and on and on. You get it. I'm going to say to you that having one funnel, I don't believe is going to generate enough business. So at the end of the next two weeks, I'm hoping that you'll discover that there are four to six funnels, database being your biggest funnel, because we talked about the ROI at 22% per year and building a database and nurturing that database and adding value to that database. You're going to add on to the main funnel being your database. You're going to add on three, four, or five more lead gen prospecting funnels. So we have enough leads. We have enough conversations. We have enough appointments. We have enough uh, presentations and contracts and that and have enough food. And we're, and we're doing that. So I'm going to share with you strategy number one and funnel number one, other than database, is what I call the spin to win. So... I'm gathering that things may be selling quicker than you can possibly do to spin to win. But with that said, it's one of those opportunities where existing agents and new agents can use this as a phenomenal lead gen opportunity. So the lead gen opportunity is to spin more business from the business and as the business is being generated either by the brokerage or by you, the individual agent, okay? So whenever you get a listing, Whenever you get a sale, whenever you have a buyer that can't find what they're looking for, whenever you're doing an open, whenever you are doing a price a correction or a price adjustment, they are marketing opportunities for you to spin more buyers and sellers from those marketing opportunities as they occur. So you think about this, the art of creating and being proactive versus a reactive agent being a marketer versus a passive and put it on realtor.ca and see if they will come to create an opportunity versus waiting for an opportunity to generate more business with the existing broker business or the brokerage or the agent's business and generate those opportunities of spinning more business. Those that master this process, statistically, NAR, the National Association of Realtors says that if you're good at it, one listing, one sale, one bona fide buyer, 
one opportunity will generate 15 more listing or buying opportunities on average per opportunity if you're good at spinning it. If you wing it, if you do it once in a while, you get win it results and you get once in a while results. If you have a system, if you're intentional and you follow a process and you do it every time, then you're going to see the results and the fruit of the labor doing this and that. And I can tell you this, the consumer does not see the difference between I just listed, I just sold, I have a buyer, I have a price adjustment, I have an open hosting and that, or they don't notice it between it and those that don't have one and don't want these, they can, you can say, we just listed, we just sold, we have a buyer, we in that, and you can use those opportunities through the brokerages, listing sales, opens and that, or your own. So I or we works both the same. So if you're new to the business, you're approaching the veteran agents that are too darn busy to do this and spinning to win for them and for you. For those agents that have an assistant or those agents that have time that are having a business and that, they should build the system. They should build this process. At the end of the day, everyone on this call can win by using this as a lead gen and prospecting funnel. I will tell you that the two most effective, you can write this down, street cred proven, most effective methodologies and methods that I'm going to show you in this system here is a bona fide buyer when the brokerage or you have a legitimate bona fide buyer or a just sold message and have other families or prop or other people to place those two messages just sold and bona fide buyer top two messages better than just listed better than just a reduction or a price adjustment better than an invite to an open the two best just sold have buyers or more buyers that need to be placed or we have a legitimate bona fide buyer messaging work the best on the spin to win okay and it is we have a buyer or i have a buyer we just sold or I just sold. They both work. It doesn't matter. Don't overthink it. Those new agents get other agents and spin business and that and give them a piece or share in it or co-list it, whatever in that. The agents, the veteran ones that aren't spinning business because it's moving too quickly or they don't have the time in that, figure a way to get this system and process in place. It is hugely advantageous to you. So first resource, I will email my database. I will mail, snail mail my database. I will video email my database or text or video text or video email my database. So a just, a just listed um, uh, messaging here, guys. Write this down. The messaging and what you say and how to say it has the biggest impact on human behavior. So if I run up to anyone on this call or anybody in the room here and I run up and say, I'm wondering if you could help me, Nine times out of 10, most human beings are going to say, yeah, what do you need? How can I help? So my messaging is, is help-based, it's servant-based, it isn't ego-based. So it's, I'm not, it, my message is, we are awesome, is not, I'm awesome or we are awesome. It's, I need your help or we need your help. So the message is, help, my clients, John and Susan, would greatly appreciate your help with the sale of their property. This is a just-listed messaging. Would you have a friend, family member, coworker that may be just in their home? If so, would you mind letting us know their name and number and I'll follow them up and give them excellent service. We appreciate the help and consideration in helping make the move for John and Susan in your neighborhood. That much easier, Wade. Okay. So the messaging is not ego-based, it's servient and help message based. That. Based on human behavior, you'll get a better response, but that's the messaging. So when you're posting, when you're emailing, when you're videoing, when you're texting and this, that, when you're direct mailing or unaddressed or direct mailing or unaddressed mailing, undirect mail, you need to make sure that your messaging is shifted versus servant and help-based versus ego-based and look at me, I'm Sandra D. Second opportunity, a bona fide buyer. Help my clients, John and Susan, we greatly appreciate it. They're looking for some assistance to purchase their next property. Would you happen to know a family family member, coworker that selling a two bedroom, two bath home in this particular price range? If you were, I'd be able to, would you mind giving me that person's name and follow up? I'll follow up and give them excellent service. So I'm asking you to help me place your new neighbor with John and Susan's listing and help them move on with their lives. And, and you help yourself placing your next new, new, new neighbor in a just listed message, or are you helping me place John and Susan as a buyer. So you don't literally give John and Susan's name and phone number and let the clients go direct in that. You give them a little taste of humanization. So when the messaging is helping and we need your help, 
and it's humanized by that what you have here is actually legit and bona fide, then the response is incredibly different and in, in, in what you're looking for. Sadly, there are agents and salespeople that have used the bait and switch where they don't have a buyer or they don't have a legitimate person. Please don't add to that that negativity in that and don't bait and switch and don't use. If you don't have a buyer, then don't use this format. If you don't have a listing, then don't use this font. Be truthful, be transparent, be authentic in that, but use the help message and the humanization message to get the results you're looking for, okay? The other thing for veteran agents in the room, guys, and for new agents, imagine this. When your database is seeing that you are needing help for buyers or you're needing help for sellers and things like that, does that increase your street credibility and, and the reputation that you're doing well and that you're good at what you do, yes or no? Yes. Right? And is it? And it's not ego-based. You're saying, could you help us with this? Could you help us that? And they're like, man, Wade, like we saw you posting that you have a buyer and you have this listing and we just sold this and this, that. And the new agents in the room, when somebody asks you, man, you look like you're so busy, you just smile and say, yes, we are. Because including myself, we all faked it till we made it in this business. And everybody has faked it till we make it. But you fake it and you make it based on integral that you do have a buyer or somebody's buyer in the office or you do have a listing or somebody's listing in the office you do have, right so don't beat and switch and be authentic uh be uh i guess not making it up and being uh untruthful in that be real and use the brokerages or use your own opportunities to create that messaging and the agents the veterans the people will see that you're still good you're still you're still active and you're still working in the business and the new ones will be like man you're really busy and you're really doing well and you just smile and say, yes, we are. And the other experienced agents, it's going to keep you top of mind and show that you're still competent, you're still active, and you're still good at what you do. My dad, bless his heart, just retired this year. Uh, and he stopped reaching out his database. And I said to my dad, nobody knows if you're any good anymore, if you're any active anymore, if you're any doing that. This is a way, a double way of you being able to create buying opportunities and seller opportunities, but also to create a perception that you're still active, you're still good, you're still competent with your database without flexing on them, without posing on them that you're awesome and look at me, I'm Sandra D and that and the messaging is is different, okay? It's it's help-based, not, not um, ego-based, okay? So you can do static posts on your on your social media. You can do video posts, you can do infographics, you can do Facebook live videos, you can do Instagram. You can do all kinds of social media content. So you can use your email and your texting. You can use your, again, just like we talked about this in your database touches and that, you can use social media to d direct your messaging out there to the to your clients and that to the out to the public as well. You can use a door knock. And I'm gonna say to you guys that, a lot of you are going to uh, say, yeah, the 80s called and they want their, their methodologies back. But guys, just okay. to understand, you don't need to knock anymore. And everybody's going to say, oh, phew, thank goodness, because I don't want to knock and I don't want to talk to people because I'm terrified in case somebody asks me a question I don't know the answer to. Okay. So if you hand tuck a just listed or hand tuck a just sold or hand tuck an invite to an open or hand tuck enough letters indoors with the right messaging, 50 to 75 letters tucked in a door will get you a call. Just so you know, all my coaching clients and everybody I coach in the US and Canada and has let me know that they will get one call per 50 to 75 letters tucked in a door. One call per 50 to 75. So you think about this, Chad and Norm told you to knock on doors, but you'll get to door number four and Chatty Kathy opens up and you waste two hours talking to Chatty Kathy and you haven't got to that 50 or 75 letters tucked in the door, so you're not gonna get the call, so you think that door knocking sucks. And door knocking doesn't suck, it's just that you got to Chatty Cathy and door number four and you couldn't get enough doors with letters tucked in it, so I'm gonna tell you to tuck 50 to 75 and then knock backwards, reverse knock, if you have time. But at least you got the 50 to 75 messages tucked in enough doors, before you start knocking and running out of time to tuck. Does that make sense to everybody on the call? Mm -hmm. So get the letters, get the things, tuck them in the doors and then reverse knock backwards. So if they answer, you pull the letter out of the door and then you dialogue them. If they don't answer, you leave the letter there, move on to the next one, you reverse knock. And this way you won't run out of time. You'll get your 50 to 75 doors done and the message is tucked in there. And if you tuck enough, You'll get that magical call. I got your letter. Can you come and tell me what my place is worth? Okay. 
door knocker hangers they work still but what i'm finding with door hangers guys versus a letter folded and tucked in a door is that door hangers kind of upset the neighborhood when their door hanger is still sitting there and it kind of triggers to the thieves in the area and this is how people think in the community thinks that you're actually exposing the people that aren't home and it's a good target for them to break into the houses so there's a bit of a, a, a backlash on the door hanger side of things so just be cognizant of that and at the end of the day when you're tucking and knocking and doing this sort of thing your goal is to add somebody that doesn't have an agent of choice on the database your goal is to add somebody to your database that doesn't have an agent of choice okay that is the goal that is the opportunity so 50 to 75 again Best letter, bona fide buyer. Second best letter, just sold and we have buyers looking. Then just listed work sometimes. Open house invite works sometimes. A price reduction works sometimes that, but not as effective as bona fide buyer approach and not as effective as just sold and we have other pro other buyers needing to place them with properties. Does that make sense? Any questions on that so far? Are we good? All right, next one. You've got direct mail. So direct mail works better than unaddressed mail. So personally addressing. So this is when you have your gated, you have your strata, you have your condo and things like that. You have the, 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 the developments and stuff like that. This is where you use direct mail. Direct mail is always more effective and one of the most powerful methodologies. Canada Post has the unaddressed ad mail. Yes, it works. But unless it's followed up, it's not as effective unless... Direct mail is more effective when it's mailed to somebody and actually a stamp on it than unaddressed. And if you follow up and in person or by phone, an unaddressed piece, then you can increase your chances of lead gathering. OK, but the direct mail piece, again, is only effective if it's followed up by in person knock or an in person call. Again, when you're hosting an open house, you can invite the neighbors. So if I'm going to do a two o'clock open house, I'm inviting all the neighbors at 145. And so they'll come in and then when the public comes at two, they're going to think this is a hot listing because it's full of all the nosy neighbors and you're creating this, this hype in that. And so these are other opportunities to message them coming and helping you place their new neighbors and helping you help Susan and John move on and them to place their new neighbors in that. And again, it's an opportunity for them to possibly add them to your database. That's the goal. Video, video, video. So video texting, video emailing and that. If you haven't subscribed to it, uh, there's Loom, L-O-O-M. Anybody familiar with Loom? It's free video email, free video texting, L-O-O-M, Loom. The next one is a lesser expensive version, but a paid version is called Dub, D-U-B-B, D-U, D is in dog, U, B is in Bravo, Bravo, Dub. Dub is, a, is an inexpensive paid version of video email, video texting. And then the last lot, lot least I would suggest is one of the, the more customized and more higher end video emailing and video texting is bomb bomb B O M B B O M B. So there's your video component in that. And you're going to find loom dub and, and bomb bomb. They're basically a game changer and basically something that you're going to need to do in your video and add video to your arsenal. So for online leads, for prospecting lead gen, for follow-up connection, things like that, Video is incredibly more powerful than text and email because you're adding the tone, the voice inflection, the body language, and that it's it's adding the the human communication mechanism into that video that's going to get you a higher, better return and a higher, better response by using that. So Loom, Dub, or Bomb Bomb, highly recommend and highly recommend that you. And I kind of insist that you have to have one of the three to make it in today's marketplace for sure. You can. Hey, use can I Yes. Yeah, go ahead. When you say it's a video text, is there like, can you enter in all of your clients' texts? Like so, phone numbers? I know you can in uh, Bomb Bomb and I know you can in Dub. I don't know if you can on the free version of Loom. Okay. And so when you send, so if you enter everybody in and you make yep. your video, it yep. looks like just that person got it. Correct. Yep. Yep. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. So bomb bomb, yes. Dub, yes. Not sure on the free version of Loom that you can do that though. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. So your personal mail. How many of you add just listed, just sold, bona fide buyers, all of that into your newsletters? You should, because again, it's showing that you're active. It's showing that you're having success. It's showing that you're that you're good at what you do and you're having success. 
right? And adding it into your letter pieces and things like that. So again, be careful with your messaging, ask them to help you and humanize, help and humanize versus ego and, and, and pushing on them. Pull it, pull them in, don't push them on them, okay? Don't push them on them. And personal addressed mail, highly, highly more impactful and effective. Forbes magazine saying that like it's a way higher return investment on personal addressed mail than unaddressed admin. Okay. Unless unaddressed is followed up. You can use the classifieds to generate lead opportunities and in, in, in websites and on online and offline classifieds. And you can create your messaging in those opportunities there. You can use Facebook to create those spin to win opportunities as well with Facebook content. And that you can use Google and pay-per-click and use those opportunities on Google and Google reviews and different Google opportunities. So you're using the online component as well and social component and classifieds, offline or online classifieds. You can use different uh, agent uh, networking opportunities to sell your messaging in that. So I don't know about you guys, but the local, all the agents in Kelowna now have a Facebook page. It's probably one of the most powerful needs and wants and communication tools of all of Kelowna. Does Red Deer have that similar type of setup? Uh, we do like our own office. You know, when yeah, we need yeah, so Tamara and Shannon Stone from Remax actually started Kelowna Realtors Facebook page back in the pandemic three years ago, and it now has every agent that's licensed in Kelowna as a messaging tool in that. Somebody needs to start one for the, the Red Deer agents that. It's been probably the single most powerful needs and wants and spin opportunity in there. Not just, We have one for our office, but that Kelowna one in the region, all the agents on there, there's like a about 11 or 1200 of them on that Facebook page has become the, the best tool for promoting and, 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 and asking, I got buyers looking, you got this, do I need this? I got this, I have wants that. It's become an incredibly powerful tool for the Kelowna region agents that highly recommend somebody starting that maybe even your office starting that with the red mm -hmm. opportunity and doing that. That's where you promote your lunches, you promote your tours, you promote your needs, wants, haves, things like that. It's great to be in your brokerage, but we're using our brokerage and the local community, and they're both incredibly powerful means of communication for needs, wants, and haves. So that's not just realtors, and that's the public that you no, have No, that's there? just the agents. Just the, that's just the agents. So all the agents in our area. So Kelowna has about 1,200, and I believe that Kelowna Realtors Facebook page is up to about 1,100 on there just licensed realtors in the board. But we also have our office only one as well for needs, wants, and haves, so both of them. And then your office agent network, you can work what you got, what you need, and work that with your agents in your own office and that what you're doing with, with that whole system and all effectiveness and that. You've got the coming soon campaign, so you can communicate those coming soons to your database, to your clients, to your customers, to each other and communicate those coming soon opportunities, which works great. Uh, expired opportunities, you can look at that and and your expired opportunities are, are where you're finding the off market properties for, for, your, for your buyers, right? So you become creators for off market buyers and finding off market properties. So you're looking at expired, you're looking by owners, you're looking in your own database, you're looking in your own office, you're looking and knocking, you're, you're mailing, you're knocking, you're, you're, you're posting in classifieds, you're posting on social media and video and things like that. You're actually finding something for the buyer, not waiting for the buyer like every other agent in your community, okay? By owner opportunities. These are great little tools here. So what these are is when I take a listing, I create a mini sticker of their listing and ask them to hand out 50 of my business cards. So this is a little MLS, little mini MLS feature sheet of their listing. And I'll ask the sellers to hand them out if anybody pulls up or give them to their friends and family and coworkers and help me help expose their listing. And then the other one is, is new uh, mini M, uh, moving cards, moving addresses. I just print these on the envelope labels and peel them and put them on 50 of my business cards on the back of 50 of my business cards. And I give my sellers and my buyers a stack of these to use these to spin more opportunities from my listings and from my sellers and from my buyers and they're moving in their photos and that. And Chad, I have a template for these that I'll send you that the, the, the team there can just change and, and make their own of these and put them on the back of their cards and you just print them on the labels that you get from Staples 
and then stick them on the back of your business cards and hand them out to your sellers and hand them out to your buyers when they move. Another opportunity to spin more business from your business, okay? So at the end of the day, you're trying to be proactive, not reactive. You're trying to create, not wait. Trying to leverage more business from the business that you have or the brokerage has. Trying to make more of what you have and be consistent, create a process and a system in that. And for those of you that don't have business, you can use this to get more business and to create a perception that you're doing well. For those veterans in the room, you can spin more business that you're getting business and also create a perception that you're still active and still doing well without bragging and without being egotistical and without working on it. It's one of those areas where I find new agents and the brokerage are missing out on spinning. And I'm seeing that veterans that are so busy are missing out on spinnings and that. And so I encourage you to consider this as one of your funnels in, in, in your lead gen and prospecting and take an opportunity and spin more from this opportunity. Okay, guys? Any questions, any comments, any concerns on the spin to win system? No, we're just ready to win. We ready to win. All righty, all righty. Okay, next one. So let's go to the next next opportunity. Okay, so the next one is your internet leads. So Chad, I'm going to send you guys. I've already sent this to Chad, guys. So last year in Vegas in November, I went to a Super Teams conference of Super Teams, and their ISA, their inside sales, their scrubbing lead team taught me in a half day seminar on what they do to convert internet leads to 12% conversion rate chat. Wow. 12%. So I'm, I'm going to get, guys, I've emailed Chad what is called the seven day blitz. It's in that email, Chad. The seven day blitz, guys, is the exact seven days of what they text, what they call, and what they email to the clients, the leads, and convert at 12%, okay? All right, so you're gonna have to read that. So I, I'm gonna be really respectful and internet leads don't suck, realtors follow-up sucks, okay? Just so we're clear, all right? So leads don't suck, we suck. So there's this push back years ago to get more leads. That was Keller's Millionaire Real Estate book. Then the leads, now you can buy them. They're easy to come by, but they're not easy to convert and they're not cheap. They're not, ex they're not inexpensive. So it's the, the conversion that's our issue in our pandemic, not creating them and getting them. It's the conversion of them. That's the problem. So, and what the other thing is, the problem is, is that realtors don't respect and don't understand the online internet empowered consumer guys. So here's a little bit of nuggets and, and a little bit of education for you. The internet empowered consumer right searches and spends a lot more time 10 months plus okay the internet empowered consumer is more of a long tail than that where the offline consumer makes a decision and looks at less properties and makes a quicker decision the online one is is in control and wants anonymity so it's a bit of a, a challenge and so with internet, you have to respect the anonymity and respect their control and be patient. Is there anybody else like me and the president of the control club and impatient club and that I'm the CEO and president like me? Right? <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's a disease. It's a sickness. I get it. But these guys, it's not about the lead sucking. It's not about us. It's about our impatience and our, their timing, not our timing and their control and not their, my control. And you got to let go if you're going to work these and you're going to be effective at these and convert at 12%. Okay. So how to get the leads. You can hire a Fiverr freelance person and go Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R, and have them create the ads for you on Facebook and use a, a website called card.cao, Chad. So you can use card, C-A-R-R-D.co, guys. And you can create unlimited landing pages and unlimited online landing pages and like one page websites to capture leads. And you can use a Fiverr freelance uh, virtual assistant on Fiverr to create those ads and create those things on Facebook to drive them to your one paid landing pages on card. And they're both super, super inexpensive. Or you could go to Agent Locator, Market Leader, Bold Leads, Smart Leads, Real Geeks, Boomtown, Conversion, Commissions Inc., Smart Set, Smart Set. The Lamborghini and the most expensive Cadillac version is Real Estate Webmasters. The least expensive and the most affordable entry company is out of Mississauga called Agent Locator. 
So agent locator is the beginner, most economical, and locator spelt with O-R at the end, not E-R. And then the most expensive Cadillac Lamborghini version is the real estate webmasters. And then all these other ones in here, you guys, are all in between cost-wise. So I'll give you an example. Agent locator starts at two fifty dollars a month. Real estate webmaster starts at about ten grand a month and costs. But real estate webmasters generates thousands of leads a month. Agent locator uh, generates a few a day in difference. Is there anybody using any of these systems in the room? Hey, wait. Yeah. Sorry, wait. Is that any different or any better than the landing pages and squeeze pages that we get from RLP Sphere? Honestly, no, they're not. So my one of my top guys, that's Justin Wiley, just uses Property Boost on, on the KV Core Sphere system, and and does really well on Property Boost off of the KV Core system as well for generating. You could also do like you could make your own landing pages, yep. squeeze pages, yep. and borrow these. So yep, yeah, you can do the same. So there's a there's quite a few people in my office that use tv core property boost or create their own like michael sluka does in my office and do well and that for sure at the end of the day it's not the leads that come in that are the problem it's the conversion in the system and having a proper system in place that's where the money is that's where the conversion is right so the answer to you is you're making your own you're doing your own using property boost using locator using it they all work but they all just cost differently but they're all work at the end of the day the money is in the conversion in the seven day blitz not in anything else. If that makes sense, great question. The seller leads, what's my home worth? Uh, uh, you can do a net, uh, uh, a net property net, uh, what your net uh, uh, position is of your home in that. I'm curious, curious how much equity analysis you have. So can everybody in the room stop and make agreement today that we don't offer free market evaluations and CMAs anymore? The 70s called, they want their marketing back. We all now provide equity, home equity analysis. Okay. We do home equity anal analysis. We don't do competitive market analysis and free CMAs. Okay. Guys, for the buyer leads. And so the gentleman that asked me about what leads, here's your best buyer lead bait a landing page about foreclosures and distress sales. Number one, best lead bait. Number two, fix and flip. Number, two, number three, beat other buyers to listings. New listings, get lists of off market listings. Okay. Homes under X number of dollars. Those are all your best buyer lead baits for closures, distress sales, fix and flippers, beat other buyers to new listing, uh, homes under X number of dollars or off market shadow inventory or how to find listings or, or listings that aren't on the MLS. That's your best online lead bait messaging. Any questions about the wording of seller leads? Any questions about the wording on buyer leads? Good. All right. Next one, your mindset. So at the end of the day, the conversion rate is 2% nationally between one and a half and 2%, but you can convert at a rate of 11 or 12% if you follow the seven, if you follow the seven day blitz system in that. And that's what we're going to go through. And that's what I'm going to provide you. So rule number one, speed to lead first agent. So anybody want to guess how many sites in Canada uh, an internet empowered consumer looks for listings at, at one at, at, at time at one significant time? Anybody want to guess how many they're looking at at one time for for listings in Canada? Good guess. Eleven. Average Canadians looking at eleven websites. Isn't that insane? And here's why. Because us stupid realtors leave all the sold inventory on our websites and they keep looking at another site and another site and another site. And they're looking at all sold stuff and we don't take it off. So now we've got them programmed and trained to look at 11 sites instead of just realtor.ca or rollapage.ca, which are the top two in Canada. Now they look at 11, nine more, because we are dumb and we self-sabotage ourselves and we don't take off the solds. And then they find the stuff and they call you and they're like, Hey, why didn't you show me this, Chad? Why didn't you show me this one? And you're like, yeah, it's sold. Yeah, that's sold. Yeah, that's sold. Yeah, that's sold. Yeah, that's sold. So they go to 11 sites, guys. Now, why I bring that up is because now you're in competition with 11 agents. They go to 11 sites. They could be followed up by 11 agents. That's why the first and the last is so important. The first person under five minutes to respond 
and the last person to stick around in 10, 12 months wins. The first person to respond under five minutes and the last person to stick around 10, 12 months later wins. So you have to call, you have to text, and you have to email, but you have to video text and you have to video email because I can't tell by your static text and your static email whether I like you, trust you, or somebody I want to work with. So the video texting and the video emailing, game changer. She seems nice. He seems good. He seems whatever in that. So you have to implement those video components to increase your likable, trustable, and conversion rates. And sorry, but you still have to make the call. So the number one CRM for those that are doing online leads is FUB, follow-up boss, follow-up boss, F-U-B, the number one. And follow-up boss, can you can make a phone call through voice IP phone call from that software. It will send a video text and it will send a video email. So FUB does those three. You got to dial it on the computer to make the FUB phone call, but it'll send a video text and it'll send a video email using follow-up boss. All right. So speed to lead and having a text, an email, and a call. Okay. And it is in that system. So this will take care of that. FUB will take care of the majority of it and do all of that. Okay. So you have to stick around, but most importantly, the video component will now create an increase of, of, I like that person. I trust that person. They seem like somebody want to do business and it'll increase your response by using video and adding that video. I can't tell whether your tone, voice, likability, trust, and that comes through a static email or static text. And that, I cannot tell that. I cannot, I could sort of tell that on a phone call, but I cannot tell that. So you have to add video texting and video emailing to change all of that. So my favorite thing to do is when you're doing a video text or a video email, please add a whiteboard to it. So think about the response rate. If you see me holding a, so the video is there, or the video text is frozen and you see your name on that whiteboard. How many people be honest would click on that if you saw your name on that whiteboard? Right? See the difference? So when you do a video text and a video email, you add the whiteboard. So you put their name on it. You put the price range they required, they requested on. You put the address of the place they required on it. You put your value proposition on it. Whatever the clickbait is in the static whiteboard messaging. So the video helps you with conversion and the click helps you by what the message in the whiteboard is in your video text and video emailing. Does this make sense to everybody? So your whiteboard messaging, right, can be looking for listings off market, question mark. I like my chances of them clicking at it. It could be their name, Chad Jensen, question mark. I like my chances of Chad clicking on that. If I like the chances of if I put the price range or the address of the property, or I put what I'm offering or what I can beat other buyers to new listings, question mark. You increase the chances of them clicking and watching the text video or text email by putting your messaging and your value proposition in the whiteboard static page message. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I gave you a whole bunch of value propositions that you can use message wise, their name, the address, their price range, fixer uppers, foreclosures, schools, uh, uh, buyer packages beat other buyers to new listings, off-market listings, that your messaging and what you're offering will entice them to click. But agents don't follow up enough. Agents don't offer a value proposition and they don't offer an opportunity for them to click and to respond to them. So your value proposition needs to be compelling. And hey, on this whiteboard, I got this. Click it and find out how you get it. That's how you get better click response by what your message is and what your value proposition, what you're offering, okay? So video texting, video emailing, whiteboarding, messaging, and clicking in that all makes a big difference, okay? Last little nugget, you sync all your YouTube videos and all your video messages and all your communication that you sync it so that they can make an appointment using a software called Calendly. 
Does anybody have Calendly set up to their to their their uh, their day timers and to their schedule and that for anybody to make an anonymous showing appointment through Calendly or a visit with you to meet with you in your in your office or anything like that? Does anybody use Calendly? So imagine it's a text email appointment opportunity for them to make an appointment to look at a property that they emailed you on or make an appointment with you in the office to come meet with you at that. So it syncs with your calendar and you, you should do this. If anybody's doing YouTube videos, you should be putting your Calendly link on your social media videos, on your YouTube comment section. So, or when you're texting or emailing, have the, the Calendly link embedded in there so they can make an appointment to view that property or make an appointment to meet with you in that. When one of my coaching clients added the Calendly link to her complimentary CMA packages to her database and they can make an appointment using Calendly, she had 21 appointments to come see her sellers with their complimentary CMA packages from the Calendly link that they booked the appointments in her calendar for her to come and see them and talk about their house and talk about their equity. So what's what you're missing is the opportunity to appointment capture and contact capture in your social, in your videos, in your messaging, in your text and things that Calendly will streamline that capture and that appointment capture and that contact capture by adding another layer to it. How many people like the Calendly tool? Such a great tool, such a great tool, okay? So you gotta be consistent. These guys are saying seven days. Some people say 11 to 14 days. At the end of the day, six days minimum seven days is realistic okay and you're waiting for that moment of truth google calls it zmot the zero moment of truth when the consumer says hey i'm ready to give you my control now i'd like to see something i'd like to get together i'd like to do that you're waiting for that zero moment of truth okay in the first seven days you're going to do the text emails and calls on day three, you rest, just so you know. No, day four, you rest. So you text, email, and call day one, two, and three. You rest on day four, and then you text, email, and call on day five, six, seven. And if they don't put their hand up, it's not that the lead sucks. It's that they're still long in their decision, and you just put them in an auto email drip and let the drip and let the email continue to contact them for the next nine months or more. Does that make sense to everybody? If they're ready to do something, in the first seven days, they'll put their hand up and say, hi, can I look at this? Hi, can I get more of this and that? It's not that they're not, the lead sucks. You just got to intubate them and communicate with them and put them into the email drip for another nine months until they're ready to put their hand up and say, hi, I'm ready. And I can't explain it. And it's a, it's a weird phenomena. And you can't understand internet and power consumers, but just got to trust the system. You got to trust the experts and listen to the guys that convert at 12% and not the guys that are converting at one and a half percent. Last, the callback script. So this is the universal telephone script called LP Mama. You talk to them about their locations. You talk to them about their price ranges. You talk about their motivation. You talk about, you can only assume that they're doing all the lifting themselves and they're not under contract with another agent. We talked about this last week. We talk about their money and their mortgages, and then we talk about the benefits to them of meeting with you for the appointment. That is the universal callback script called MLP Mama, okay? For those of you that have leads sitting there that you haven't followed up, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip right now. Every one of them, text, email, or, or text or email all your old leads this message. I have not heard from you, so I'm assuming you have found a home, so I'm gonna cut you off the email listings. Watch what happens. I am not kidding you. You should do this every 90 days. Haven't heard from you. I'm assuming you found a home. I'm going to stop sending you the listing alerts now. You should do that every 90 days and watch what happens, folks. All your auto email listing alerts, send them that message every 90 days. I'm turning you off. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm here. <laughs> Whoa, stop, stop. I'm good, I'm good. Sorry, 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 sorry. Watch what happens to your responses. So online leads, set your budget, set your system, set your CRM, 
Get your videos, get your video texting, get your video emails, get your whiteboard, get your value propositions, put the system into place. If they don't respond the first seven days, put them into an email drip and be the first and be the last, okay? Any questions on online leads, folks? The leads don't suck. Our system and our follow-up sucks, okay? And respect the online internet empowered consumer. Respect them. Don't push on them. Pull them and respect them, okay? All right. Last but not least, my third nugget of the day today, guys, we're going to talk about the geo farm. Is there anybody in the call or anybody in the room that has a geo farm? They're the expert of a building, a neighborhood, a segment of the market. Is there anyone geo farming? I'm kind of starting it right now. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Okay, so before you butcher it, I'm going to teach you what to do and how to do it, okay? <laughs> I've already done the turnover rate for all the neighborhoods. In the oh, I love you, man. You've been reading my mirror material. That a boy. All right. So he just did the magic nugget for, for GeoFarm, guys. Pick it on turnover rate. Don't pick it on any other reason. Highest listing and sale and turnover rate for a year. That's what you choose your farm. Be the expert at a place where people are buying and selling and moving. Don't be an expert at when they wait and they only move when they die. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it's turnover rate, turnover rate, turnover rate. Okay. So plain and simple. If there's this many houses in the neighborhood, you need a double digit turnover rate. So I'm talking 10, 20, 25, 30% annual turnover rate. That's a good geo farm. My number one solo agent in my office, you guys, he has three geo farms, okay? 167,000 GCI a year on his three geo farms. Does anybody want to make 167 grand on three, three complexes in a year? Okay, I'm going to show you what he does. So Ryan went and found the turnover rates in that, and he has three geo farms in Kelowna. One's called the Cove Resort. The other one's called Bushery Beach Cottages. And the other one's called Discovery Bay. They all have... Almost 20, if not 25% annual turnover rates. And he's built this system for all three farms and he does about 167 grand a year in those three geo farms. Okay. So he goes through this and he focuses on it because he wants to be the geographic expert. So last year in the Cove, he did 21 listings and sales in the Cove last year, you guys, 21. Okay. So he uses Market Snapshot for stats. Anybody use Market Snapshot? It's a top producer tool. Anybody use Market Snapshot? So he uses Market Snapshot and he sends the owners of the complex Market Snapshot. But what Ryan does, guys, is he ordered title for every single owner in the Cove, in Bushry Beach, and in the Discovery Bay. He ordered title. Why did he order title for 11 bucks for everybody in his three geo farms? Anybody want to tell me why he did that? So he has their names and he direct mail them. Correct. Thank you very much. So he, so he now knows that his stuff is not getting to a tenant or not getting to somebody in that. He knows that they're legit. He knows where they're communicating and contacting, and that's where they're sending their tax bills, property tax notices. That's where they're sending it. So that's how he gets it, and so he sends it. So he sends market snapshot stats to their shares. He has neighborhood websites and just their building websites for, for his clients in the farm. He does a newsletter specific for their farm. And he also has uh, mailing pieces that he uses, a mailing piece company that he uses, geographicfarm.com, that he sends as well. Okay? So here's a copy of, here's what his website looks like. Ownthecove.com. Okay? Ownthecove.com and ownmissionmeadows.ca. Check these websites out, guys. They're probably two of the best geofarm stats or sites that I've seen. Plus, you can't believe on own Mission Meadows, look at all the stats, stats, the statistics that he provides for the homeowners in that complex. It's incredible. He has days on market. He has list of sales. He has absorption rates. He has, like, look at all the statistics he has for his geofarm and that he provides them. And, and he becomes the resident expert based on his newsletter, based on his mailing pieces, based on his website, based on his Facebook page. He becomes the resident expert of this place. And within eight, eight months, he became the expert in these complexes and these buildings, okay? This is his newsletter. See any correlation with the website and his newsletter? Oh, yeah, they're exactly the same. So he mails the web, he mails the newsletter to them, personally mails them four times a year. 
He has their website up that's riddled with all their statistics and all their absorption rates and all the list to sell and expireds and average price, medium price, everything. It's riddled with statistics and that. And he also has a Facebook page and he owns it. He owns it in the Cove. This is another one of my coaching clients that has another complex in a newsletter, which I like the way he laid out these infographics for the stats for his farm. I like those. Here's a, and so basically he has direct personally addressed mail. So it doesn't get thrown out and it gets read. The, the conversion rate and his absorption rate, his conversion rate is double digit. So your, your geo farm, do not waste your time if it's, it's a single digit uh, annual turnover rate. Look at a double, double turnover rate. So step number one is discover where the people are buying and selling at a high turnover rate. Stat and number two activity is pull title and get where they live and get where they're mailed to. Number three, get all the statistics on that geo farm, all the stats, and look at Old Mission Meadows website to get those stats. Number four, get all your data and build a, a website for your farm, build a newsletter for your farm, build a Facebook page for your farm, buy the domain name for your farm, okay? And start farming the farm, no pun intended, mailing them four times a year, Facebook messaging them, driving them to the website. And within six to 12 months, you like Ryan Peterson become the resident expert of the Cove, the resident expert of Butcher Beach Cottage, the resident expert of that. But I'm gonna be honest with you, what he did guys, was he built one and it started to make him money. And then a year later, he built the next one and then it made money. And then the year later, so he did them one year at a time when they were starting to pay and when they were starting to hit and they starting to do it, he didn't do all three at the same time. For financial reasons, for working them reasons and things like that, he staggered them out and paced them and, and st st staggered them out one after another, okay? Any questions about the geo farm? Any questions about the steps? You do have to do a little bit more to wait than just the turnover because like our highest turnover neighborhood in Red Deer right now is actually a really small neighborhood. So if you dominate that area, yep. it was uh, 224 houses. So if you dominate that area, you know, at 30% or something like that, you're only selling so many. So the next couple had a lower turnover rate, but they are actually a better return on investment. Yeah. So so more yeah, good so. good analogy. So you don't want the geo farm to be too small and you don't want it to be too big, right? So too small, maybe that many numbers of houses or too big might be, I'm going to say in excess of 1,200, probably too big for a geo farm, right? And under 200, probably maybe too small for a geo farm. You're right. So somewhere between 200 and 1,200, probably the sweet spot for a higher, better return on a geo farm area. And you said the highest one was 30% in Red Deer? No, it wasn't even that high, but uh, okay. they were, it was up, it was the highest one in Red Deer, but it was only 224 houses. So yeah. You know, and what was the, any idea what that turnover rate percentage wise was? Uh, not off the top of my head. I can't remember. Okay. That well, anything, numbers. anything higher than single digit winner, winner, chicken dinner, if that helps you. So 10% or higher, go for it. Yeah, well, they it, there was probably about a third, uh, a third to a half of the neighborhood was actually over the city's turnover rate. So okay, yeah, <laughs> and 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 the number one reason why agents don't do this is because it takes time to research the stats. It takes time to research the turnovers. It takes money to pull title and to build the website and to build the newsletter and do all that. But I can tell you this. Ryan's glad he did. And he was this like he did 550, I think, GCI with a half an assistant. He shares an assistant. He did 550 GCI last year in our office with a shared half assistant. And this has definitely been probably about a well, 550 at 167,000. It's almost it's almost 33% of his annual income is coming from his three geo farms annually, right, guys? He owns the Cove, like 20 some listings and sales a year in the Cove. Like he is the man. Cottages, same, uh, not as high, but it's there. And Discovery Bay, like he does enough in those two, but he owns the Cove. He is like Superman in that, in that complex.
Okay, guys. So there's your suggestions for uh, for lead gen and that. I'm going to come with three more or four more next week in that. So your homework assignment is to start figuring out what are my lead gen funnels? What are my prospecting funnels? What would I be good at? What would I do well? What would I do effective in that? I shared three funnels plus the database is four funnels. But again, take the time to figure out what your four to six are going to be in 2023. Pick one, master it. Add another one, master it. Add another one, one at a time, okay? One at a time. Any questions about online leads? Any questions about Geofarm? Any questions about spin to win? Did everybody in the room get a nugget that they could go and implement and execute and go possibly make some money and get some listings and sales this next two weeks? Yes or no?